There are some times when you think that you're looking at a piece of art, but really you're looking at a piece of garbage. Hey, my name is Pinkass and I'll be your internet guide this evening. In my previous video, I clearly separated Outrun and Vaporwave Aesthetic, two genres that tend to get mixed when it comes to visual artwork. But there is another aesthetic genre that tends to get put in the mix, especially when you look at Vaporwave. For some reason, Vaporwave and Lo-Fi have become more and more associated with each other during the last few years. One might even say that the lines have become a little blurry. So once again, it has come to me to differentiate these two visual aesthetics and try to put some labels and boxes on things. My first experience with the Lo-Fi aesthetic was through my Instagram. I would often check out the tag Vaporwave Aesthetic and see what kind of creations that other artists were making. But way too often I found art and GIFs that didn't necessarily fit the Vaporwave brand, they were something else. Slow hip-hop edits with quotes from movies or TV shows, often with a heavy VCR filter and tags like sad boys, trash and Tumblr aesthetic. Some of these were pretty close to being associated with the Vaporwave, others were a completely different entity. Lo-fi as a musical genre can be traced all the way back to the 50s, with small rock bands recording music in a garage with low quality equipment. This led to audible imperfections on the final record that while seen as a bad thing during this time period, became an active style choice in the early 90s. Beck and Guided by Voices being two of the artists that made it into the mainstream and introduced it to the masses. Over time, hip-hop producers started implementing lo-fi style elements, often with a piano track to their beats. Some notable artists are Jay Dilla, Nujabes and MF Doom's album Mad Villainy. Living off borrowed time, the clock tick faster. That'll be the hour they knock the slick blaster. Dick dastardly and muttly with... This type of music exploded in 2011, when YouTube launched the live stream function, opening a possibility for people to make radio channels on YouTube that could play 24-7. Like our lord and savior, lo-fi hip-hop radio, beats to relax study to. Bedroom pop is also often associated with the lo-fi aesthetic and music genre. It's basically lo-fi indie pop music. And it has had a breakthrough in the recent years with artists like Mac DeMarco, Claro, Boy Pablo and Rex Orange County drawing attention to the genre. Vaporwave, on the other hand, had quite different beginnings. Many credit the artist Daniel Lopetin as the creator of Vaporwave. Originally, he released heavily eerie sampled and looped tracks under the name Sunset Corp. And these songs, I gotta say, they're, 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 they're something special. The samples were taken from popular songs and slowed down until they were almost unrecognizable, creating a new and original sound. It sounded like something you would hear at a mall or elevator music. In 2010, he came out with the album Chuck Pearson's Echo Jams Volume 1, considered by many as the birth of a vaporwave. Many artists would be inspired by this release, most importantly James Ferraro releasing Farside Virtual and Macintosh Plus Floral Shop. These releases along with their artwork would define the vaporwave aesthetic. Retro commercials, computer graphics, statues and Japanese text. One could say that the vaporwave and lo-fi music are in a small way similar genres. They are both heavy on samples, and both can be considered subgenres of chillwave, and they both embrace lo-fi sound effects like record scratching, skipping, and sound of cassette players. Over time, Vaporwave would, however, spawn multiple subgenres like future funk, mold soft, and VHS pop. But that's enough about the music. Let's get back to what's really important: the aesthetic. 
Once again, we have a Venn diagram and this time I made it myself so you know I'm kind of I'm kind of feeling myself right now. It's in the middle here that these two genres cross over and I believe that this area is the root of the mix-up. Let's start on the border here with Lisa Simpson who I found the hardest to place. You've probably heard of Simpson Wave, a genre of music videos that originated from this vine back in 2015. A clip of Bart and friends riding down in the sunset with Holmes resonance in the background. And that, that was it. The vine evoked feelings of nostalgia and relaxation among a lot of the viewers, and it didn't take long until people were trying to recreate the video. Soon, these Simpsons clips with vaporwave music in the background would take over YouTube as we knew it. Often with titles that were one space apart for each letter so you know, you could really feel that aesthetic. So that's about the loose connection Simpsons has to vaporwave. Uh, when it comes to lo-fi, the visuals are used a bit different. You might have seen these heartbreak edits or what you would call them. Taking footage from especially sad and depressing scenes from the show and putting a lo-fi beat and some filters over. Or grabbing some steel frames that look kinda lonely or depressing and turning the colors toward a darker pink purple with some retro VCR text over it. Sometimes quotes from the show are used as samples in lo-fi music as well. Now, as I've already said, this Simpson aesthetic kind of fits in both genres, but it's a lot more prevalent in lo-fi, so that's why I kind of tilted it halfway over the border there. We're finished with one type of cartoon, so let's move over to anime. Like, bitch, you the fuck do you think you talking to? First of all, you got nerd disrespect anime by calling it cartoons, then you gonna say it's some weird shit like... Because of chilled cow, lo-fi hip-hop and study stream, this anime girl has almost become synonymous with lo-fi. People started copying and making their own version. And still, if you search for lo-fi stream or playlist on YouTube, half of the results you get are clips from anime or a girl studying in her room. A lot of them also feature scenes from day-to-day -day life, cutting vegetables, waiting on a train, or just an empty city, giving a relaxed, almost meditative feeling. Vaporwave does not have a lot of anime imagery, however the subgenre Future Funk does. The anime footage used for Future Funk tends to be a lot more colorful, fast-paced, and has this kind of weekend party vibe. whereas lo-fi is more of a casual weekday. I guess one could say that both genres have taken big inspirations from Japanese culture, whether it's the anime roots of lo-fi hip-hop or the fact that every song in Macintosh Plus floral shop is named in Japanese, along with Future Funk's strong sample use of Japanese pop songs from the 80s and early 90s. Over on the lo-fi side, we also have this low quality picture of a girl with some cool sunglasses. This is taken from a video series called The Metro by Kino Probi Paris, a media project based in Russia, Belarus or Paris I think. I'm not sure, I tried my best to stalk them. They don't really answer those type of questions. The videos are shots of actors or models acting out a short scene in a subway station. People started downloading these clips and re-uploading them to social media with added lo-fi music and editing. The rapper Younger One also has visuals from this series in his music videos, sitting at around 3 million views combined. The Metro series is shot found footage style from what appears to be a low quality security cam looking over the Metro. There is something to this old low quality look that makes the images feel real in comparison to Vaporwave's very fake aesthetic. In Vaporwave we try to create a fake reality, a utopia inspired by what advertising companies think our dreams and fantasies look like. The lo-fi aesthetic is kind of a counter-movement, focusing more on real and tangible things, often with a flair of illegality to it. Either it's smoking, doing drugs, or nudity and violence. Kind of like a raw and uncut slice of our daily lives. This also includes the heavily filtered picture on the bottom left there. 
snippets of real life with some added text that often takes on some depressive or nihilistic quotes. Even though these images are mostly related to the lo-fi aesthetic, they most certainly cross over to vaporwave as well. But then, with some vaporwave elements like the aforementioned statues, computer graphics and glitches. Vaporwave art rarely consists of real-life pictures, unless they are from commercials made in the 80s or 90s. It's all about the fantasy and future that we never got, as we philosophers like to say. The three essential elements of the vaporwave aesthetic are retro technology, consumerism and Greek slash Roman statues. There you have it, that's vaporwave explained in 8 seconds. You're welcome. Okay, yeah, alright, but I've already discussed the vaporwave aesthetic in my vaporwave versus outro video, so I don't want to repeat myself too much. You can also go watch that video if you haven't done that yet. It's a pretty great video, if I do say so myself. I mean, that video and the YouTube algorithm are responsible for why there's more than 10 people watching this right now. The Vaporwave aesthetic is all about the nostalgic love we have for all commercials and Windows 95 Space Cadet! One of the greatest video games of all time, up there with Mario 64, Ocarina of Time, Witcher 3. This game has some of the most memorable sound effects of all time. And intense gameplay that will keep you sitting for hours on end. But that's enough about me and the limited game library I had in my childhood. Memes are also a big part of Vaporwave. If your Vaporwave picture isn't Vaporwave enough, just add more statues, Fiji water and have them kind of mirror themselves on the side here while you have some grid in the back. There you go, you got some serious award-winning Vaporwave art. Also, here's a Vaporwave color palette. They are mostly bright cyan and pink pastel colors. Lo-fi color usage tends to be more muted colors like these. Black and purple are definitely also two colors that tend to repeat themselves within the lo-fi aesthetic. I'm not sure how related they are, but there are some subgenres called sad boy aesthetic and or trash aesthetic. They both pull from lo-fi and some from vaporwave as well. In my opinion, they both have stronger ties to lo-fi and might be called subgenres of the lo-fi aesthetic. These are the edits that you see around Instagram, often with some SoundCloud rap over it. I'm not sure where to put the stuff, so you know, I'm just gonna have it kind of like on the side here and over by there. I think we can say that there is a lot of crossover here, and I'm pretty sure that's because there are a lot of people who like both genres. And I am definitely part of the problem, because after discovering the lo-fi aesthetic and seeing that it had a lot of similarities with the vaporwave, I started hashtagging my posts with lo-fi and lo-fi aesthetic to get those extra clicks. There's definitely overlap within the genres, but also big differences. They both tend to use these VCR filters and are really inspired by the 90s in particular. And you often see a vaporwave music with a lo-fi visual or vice versa. In the end, I guess you could say, who really cares about this stuff anyways? And yeah, you'll probably have a point, but I care at least enough to make this video. And if you want to hear me rant and discuss more about these aesthetics, be sure to subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos as well. I've also launched a Patreon recently that you can check out if you feel like supporting me. There's a Discord and access to a lot of my art as well as getting thanked at the end of each video like these two awesome dudes. There's only four of us on the Discord right now, but you know, a four-man party is a pretty great party. Anyways, I hope you liked the video, thank you for watching, and uh, that's about it. Stay safe out there, kids.